This podcast is brought to you by Allies. Allies is all about bringing growth to the software services industry. It's a platform where hundreds of companies grow together by exchanging talents, projects, and best practices. In this podcast, we will bring you the stories of the most successful companies and people in the business. We cover topics from sales, marketing, HR, and culture to give you ideas for future growth. Hi, and welcome to Allies Podcast. I'm Tommy Kaugenen, I'm your host, and today we have a very special guest. We have Michael Nylund from Go4 with me. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, Tommy. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, you just drank your coffee uh, just in a, like a big sweep. Yeah, I did, yeah. We, we <laughs> needed to start at 10.30, so... <laughs> so I'm going to drink a bit now. <laughs> Go ahead. So, uh, welcome to Allies Podcast. Thank you. And uh, today we're going to talk a bit about your story mm-hmm. from going from a small or small, mid-sized maybe company to a stock-listed thousand people company and the transition along the way uh, from becoming, from going from a software guy to a CEO. Yeah. It's very interesting. It is. Yeah. So let's start with your background a bit. Uh, how did you end up in the software industry to start with? I've been very like entrepreneurial all my life. So so I started as an entrepreneur already in the, in, in high school, basically. And and uh, very soon we, with a couple of friends, we, we started to work with with uh, IT software basically so so uh, it's been a thing for me since since I was a child interested in in, in uh, computers interested in software uh, I have been doing quite a few years of, of uh, like software development myself mm-hmm. uh, I'm not really that good at it though so <laughs> that meant that uh, I went from from being that that guy who writes the software to being the guy that that you know engages the customer and and uh, Whatever it's called, project management or, or specifications and so forth. But yeah, it, it's been like that from the very beginning. So I, I guess it's it's a like. What was your first computer? Uh, it was a Commodore sixty four. Yes, I, I was. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm a seventies guy. So I'm born in seventy nine. So uh, my my dad bought me a Vic twenty. Oh really? I had oh. that first. Uh, my and friend th- had one of those, so that, yeah. that, that's where we started. <laughs> Very, yeah, exactly. And then you went to yeah. you, you go to C sixty four. And what yeah. was the next one after that? Uh, it was a, it was a PC after that. So so I went Ooh. directly from from that. So it, it no Amiga early. or Atari. Uh, in the, in, in, uh, no, no, no. Damn. So it was two eighty six, three eighty six. I think it was an O eighty six, one of the early IBM. Compatible green. machine, yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh Jesus, <laughs> I remember those. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, my my experience in coding was I read this micro bit the uh, like uh, paper uh, or magazine, and there was this six hundred line code where there was a bouncing graffiti wall. This was for Amiga five hundred, yeah. and I was like, yeah. And then I then I did it for several hours, and then it didn't work. And I was, what? What's wrong? So probably they made a mistake in the printed version. <laughs> that was the end of my my software career. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done done that too. But but uh, the debugging uh, part part is then it, it's not maybe that interesting to go through the the printed part and compare it with no, your screen. No, so, it was horrible. Uh, yeah, n- not the thing that maybe got people into into coding. I don't know. But yeah. yeah. Okay. So so uh, what kind of companies did you have, by the way? Uh, small companies uh, working in in uh, uh, like import business for a while and and uh, uh, had a, had, a, had a small business with my with my friend and and then we had a, a an IT consultancy basically that's what I've been doing since then for for twenty five years now I guess twenty five plus years now I guess there were people that wanted us to help them that became customers and and uh, we wanted to do that so. Yeah. So you, you well, then it means you uh, you experienced the internet boom in the late in the early two. Yeah, yeah, uh, I did to some extent. Yeah, I've been building websites too. So not not my thing. That was <laughs> a hard currency back <laughs> yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, we did go through that too. Yeah. Okay, you seen that? Yeah. My only experience from that is I uh, I was still in school and I bought. Everybody was on this hype of buying shares of these Swedish companies. Like, yeah. uh, so I bought Econ Media Lab, you know, the Swedish company. Yeah, I was yeah. like, wow! Yeah. And then I lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> ah, sad, but <laughs> maybe you learned something. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no stocks for me. <laughs> later, later, we had also a company in, in in the web hosting business. So, so I've seen some of that too. Building, building like small data centers and and. 
and that be- became a thing. So that was interesting too. But, but mostly been into uh, building custom built software for for customers in in various industries. And what led you to go for in 2010? Uh, in 2010, uh, we had sold five years earlier uh, one of our businesses. I, I was working for one of the the mid sized Finnish IT service providers, and 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 basically it was, uh, let's say that. The challenges were not really the kind of challenges I was, I was interested in back back then, and and uh, I knew the guys at Go for. I knew these are guys that are ambitious. Uh, they are fun to work with. They have good ideas. So basically, that that was the that that was the idea, and uh, I haven't regretted it. Uh, it. It's been twelve years almost now. It, it, it's actually twelve years now uh, at the end of this month. So so a long long period, but. Uh, it's been really interesting, and it's go for has become like the the project for me in in my life. Yeah, and uh, I mean, as mentioned earlier here, when you started in 2010, we're talking about for, for first of all, the world was a different place in terms of, well, we didn't have, I don't think we even had Instagram, we didn't have WhatsApp, uh, like it was a yeah. different time. But the company was also different. You had like 100 people. Actually, twenty plus people. Very different from now. Yeah, I think uh, in two thousand and ten we, and I might remember, not not right, but I think our uh, net sales was like two million in that year. So and now, so, not, well, now uh, for for the last twelve months, it's one hundred and thirty and plus million. So a bit quite. different. Yeah, <laughs> a bit different. Yeah, quite yeah, good, yeah. right? <laughs> Uh, so uh, you started as. Uh, what did you do when you started in GoFor? I have done my fair bit of of like customer work, consultancy work, uh, also at, at GoFor. So that's what I started with. Uh, uh, I actually brought uh, one of one of uh, our longstanding customers when when I came to the company and and, and worked with that. Uh, and that has always been pretty important for me. I, I like to understand what we do and 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 like to understand what what our customers do. And 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 that's why, why I liked. Doing customer work so much, uh, what I then started doing on the side, or or whichever way you want to see it, but but uh, basically my role has been then to to build like new opportunity, new business opportunities, start start new business, uh, like internal startup kind of mm, things yeah, inside yeah. GoFor. So so that's what I've been doing uh, in, in a couple of, of of different projects that we've had, uh, going from a purely software development consultancy into more of an uh, like uh, advisory consultancy, digital yeah. uh, transformation yeah. advisory consultancy. Th- those has, have, have been the, the projects that, that I've been involved in. But you made uh, quite the journey, to be honest, starting with 20 plus people, and now you're 1,000 plus? Yeah. 1,000 uh, plus, that's quite, quite nice. That's like 100 per year for 10 years. Yeah, well, Although it hasn't been 100 per year, it has been been uh, like more of a uh, 30 plus percent uh, p- uh, growth every yes, year. So, so yeah, so a bit of a hockey stick yeah. type of uh, scenario there, of course. But but yeah, that's that that's what makes it so interesting, I guess. Uh, new challenges uh, all the time, and yeah. then uh, also using the things that you've learned from from the, the, the earlier parts of the, the career to to like uh, understand what are the strengths of our company wh- yeah. why we are good and then trying to to keep up with learning learning all the new things that come with with size and and come with responsibility come with the, the bigger impact we have in the world and so forth so go to 2010 and we fast forward to 2017 you become the CEO 2017 uh, was the year that we IPO'd. We, we went from being a, a private company. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, by, yeah, 2019 was yeah, your... Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah, so 2017 was a really, really big year for us as a company, uh, uh, going from from a company being basically owned by a few key personnel and, and the founders, which are still there there with us uh, at this day, uh, and, and IPO'd, uh, of course, a huge... Like project, huge uh, change for us. Something mm. that uh, was a bit scary too, but but I think we've we've done done well there. 2017 was, by the way, also the year that we did did uh, two other big things. We made our first company acquisition. We bought a company called Leading. Uh, prior to that, that was not something that we had uh, like thought of that that we could do. But since then, it's it's become a big part of what 
go force growth strategy that that we have, have acquired uh, uh, like basically one company a year and or, and the other thing or the third thing in 2017 uh, was that we were chosen as the uh, great place to work number one in Finland congratulations uh, <laughs> thank you it's been a while now but uh, yeah we still remember it fondly and and number two in Europe something that we have had, that was very central to our strategy uh, from from uh, well 2010 or so uh, to to become this company that that people want to work for and and that was something that's really big for us and now we're going to fast forward two more years yeah. to 2019 yeah. okay yeah. you are uh, being proposed being a ceo what's your first thought um to be honest first thought was uh, what uh, <laughs> me ceo uh, of course uh, we had a long period being like a, a like a founder led company mm. so the idea of changing that into something else was, was maybe the the big thing that that uh, instantly like I, I was thinking about and and uh, felt in the in the uh, in the moment like a very big change yeah I, I totally think it's understand. been been uh, good for go for as a company though looking back at it now uh, I, I hope many people agree with me uh, and uh, it's been a really important part in like go for growing up to be a, a, a grown up company to be a, be a, like a, a not reliant on a, on, a, on a single person not reliant yeah. on on something that is uh, like uh, outside of the uh, company so so it's been been a really good good thing uh, but yeah the, the 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 first reaction was was kind of a, a, a shock i've never <laughs> been actually that kind of person that uh, that thinks about my my career in in terms of of what will i become next and 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 yeah. what, what what are the titles and so forth but but of course I, I i knew that i know this company i i know what this company is built on what kind of like values what kind mm-hmm. of strengths and so forth so so in in that sense it uh, i thought it might be a good choice was there any um was there any thinking about you know um uh, getting in an external ceo or taking it from inside, do you know? I, I do know some of the, the the discussions there, and yeah, we we went through the different uh, options there, and and uh, I think uh, we pretty quickly settled on on uh, on the idea that if we have somebody coming from the inside, that is something that uh, will more play to the strengths of this company. Yeah. We had no crisis, we had no like. Uh, uh, problems in the company that needed to to be addressed or or like uh, have something from the outside uh, mm. changing things. Uh, so so yeah, pretty quickly I think the the board and everybody was on uh, was uh, on board with the idea that that it will come from the inside. Yeah, what do you think are the pros and cons if you just generally think about getting external CEOs? And I know it's very situation specific as well, of course, but. Your like first thoughts? Do you, would you prefer getting it from inside or? Uh, depends on the company situation, of course. If you have a, a situation where you value continuity, value the, the strengths that that the company is built on, then sure. If you have the, the ability to to grow people from inside the company, mm. you you should. I, that, that's what I think. Yeah. On the other hand, if if you've like driven into a dead end somehow or or have problems that need to be addressed. Uh, it can be beneficial to to have somebody from the outside. I, I totally agree. Actually, I think when it's uh, when a, when a company hits kind of a crisis, it's probably better to get an outsider to do some of the nasty decisions. <laughs> yeah, uh, and not maybe be having that thinking from from the outside, not not, not being like uh, tied to the ideas that you have inside the yeah. company that, that that very quickly become like the the canon of thinking in inside the company and, and you, yeah. you can let, let loose of those if, if you bring somebody from the outside so exactly so, there are no attachments and like messy like sticky stuff inside and yeah, yeah. so how does it feel now after three years CEO <laughs> <laughs> it feels great yeah I'm, I'm really like proud of what we do at go for and 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 go for being the the project of of my working life uh, uh it's really something that's important for me that that I I can be proud of what we've done as a company, uh, both in terms of like uh, success in in financial terms and and growth and 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 profitability mm. and so forth, building building a bigger company, but but also what what kind of company we are, have become in, in terms of the the impact we have on the world around us. We we take really much uh, 
pride in, in, in the positive impact. We talk about the positive impact. So, so, so that's something that's for me personally is, is really important and, and, and what makes me so, so proud of, of being CEO of, of this great company, of, of, of this great community. Did you hesitate? How many sleepless nights did you have before? <laughs> a few, a few, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course, it, it, it's a huge responsibility. And, and uh, maybe maybe it was for the good that you don't even like instantly understand the responsibility. But, mm. but uh, or, or being a CEO of a company over a thousand people, of course, you have a huge responsibility At over a thousand people. Too. Yeah, that too. But, but, but mainly, I, I'd say about the people working for the company, of, of the customers. But, but sure, yeah, listed, uh, that, that's something that was, a, uh, let's say, a learning curve, uh, adjusting to uh, the... the Investor side of things, yeah. uh, very big change from from what I oh yeah, what, what I had done done earlier at GoFor. What's been the what would you say like main main the most difficult task of being a CEO? What would you say that is? It, it's about remembering that you are always there for for uh, the people, remembering that the servant leadership and and uh, uh, putting yourself. Reminding yourself that you should always put yourself into that position. I think that, that that's that's uh, I think the biggest thing. It means that for a person, for example, like me, uh, I want sometimes things to happen very quickly. And being impatient or patient uh, is kind of a different question. There, mm-hmm. uh, you, you really should you really have to make sure that that the company uh, does evolve, does change all the time. It doesn't do it because you wake up in the morning having an idea. Uh, the, the, the dynamics are different, but, yeah, but, the, but, but it's even more important that uh, the, the company and the organization is ready to change. Because otherwise, uh, I think uh, from the learnings that we have at Go for growth in in, in like this, uh, th- this kind of growth wouldn't be possible. So let's talk about the growth because you mentioned that it's thirty percent year on year, you know, recruitment growth. Uh, I know from my own companies how difficult it is in the tech sector to get the top talents. Yeah. Uh, there are always some companies that are, for example, hyped, that live on their brand. There are mm. some, at some point, everybody wanted to go to Rovio to work. And mm. At some point, everybody wants to go to Supercell to work. And, and there are these sexy companies where developers want to go. Volt was one. Mm. For, <laughs> for you, how do you get this talent? Like, what? How did you be able to get all this talent, attract this, all this talent in this horrible like <laughs> world where it's really hard? Uh, it, what we try to do always is tell them what we are working on. Okay. So, so that that's 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 how we approach it, and and that's where I think that the differences between companies uh, are visible. We so are. You get to work with these 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 projects and. Yeah, basically, or, or of course, we can't always promise that these mm-hmm. are the projects for for a, a individual uh, recruitee. Yeah. But uh, but these are the, the projects that Go for has worked on, and, and this is the kind of impact we get from our work. Uh, and, um, it's not for everybody, probably, but but uh, we've seen that it's for an increasing number of people. What would you say uh, from an employer branding uh, point of view? What is the the value? Uh, your value? For an outsider, like why would they come to go for? Is it only the project? What what are other components? It's not just that, but but the, uh, from a differentiation point of view, that that's really important for us. We've always been a very value value like based uh, company, and and all of our management it is based on on our two values. But first of them is that go for is a good workplace for everyone. So so that, that that's something that we've had for twenty years now. Go for is a twenty year. This is our anniversary year. By the way, <laughs> Congratulations! <years. laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, so that, that that's of course something that's uh, very built into the into the company, and that's something that uh, for the last ten years has maybe set us apart from the legacy players. Of course, we have a lot of players in the market now that that think basically the same. But but it's very very inbuilt into what Go for is. And the other value is is that uh, Go for tries for our customer success. So so we have this. Uh, strong customer focus also, and 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 uh, uh, that's where we get the, the impact part also from that. That uh, that that's for being a consultant. That's uh, we believe important for for most of the people mm. that that you get to work with things that have a have a like a meaning impact. Yeah, yeah. Th- that is actually very important when you talk about the current like. Uh, 
the current work uh, work life there is you know the great resignation there is yeah. the quiet quitting and and it seems that the, the the covid kind of even pushed these ideas a bit forward and uh do you notice these trends yourself in in the industry like are people getting like oh this is comfortable i don't want to come back to the office at all and and this kind of mentality sure sure and that that's something that we discuss a lot now what what, what does hybrid work in in the end mean for for our people of course there's the, the like the the quick positives and there's for some people the quick negatives that you can see from it but but in the long run uh, i don't think we've yet seen all of the the effects of 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 hybrid work and mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. forth so something that we discuss a lot uh how we can approach these questions Kind of as a community, as a team, always not not from an individual perspective, and 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 taking into account a lot of different viewpoints. What your teammates think about how how you should work, what your customers think how you should work, and and mm-hmm. what, how, what yourself are comf- comfortable with working. That's something that uh, it needs a little bit of a facilitation, and 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 that's a discussion that we have ongoing, and and, and for sure we haven't seen the like the end result It's yet. It's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah sh- probably. Yeah, we've been talking also earlier about um, the, the 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 software service companies basically copying each other in terms of offerings, and all of a sudden, a lot of companies have the same offerings, and you need to grow, so you need to offer more. But there is room for actually n- making a niche of yourself. Sure. Yeah, uh, how are you thinking around this this topic? I agree completely, and uh, there are a lot of niches. The, the whole is made up of a lot of niches, yeah. I, I guess, because it's 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 about people and and uh, what people value, what people need. Traditional go for niche is is one thing, and that's what we are working on on making or on improving uh, a lot. But but we have moved also into into other niches, and and we want to as a, as a group provide people with uh, different value propositions, even different brands in in terms of talent. So, yeah, that's so, what so, I was so, thinking about. Yeah. Because uh, there are some companies, as I understand, um, creating like subsidiaries that are yeah. a little yeah. bit on the side, like Ben and Jerry's, Unilever, kind of this thing. Exactly. Where yeah. they don't actually know that the mother company is, uh, is is some bigger one. Yeah. But rather niching themselves as a small. Is that a strategy you're, you're pursuing as well? It is, yeah. We don't want to make it a secret, or, or, or don't want to be transparent about it being part of Gunfor mm. Group. But, but yeah, we we do have that for for different uh, people with different expertise, people in different uh, uh, life phases in in terms of what they they value. Do they want the community also outside of the work times, yeah. or or do they value their uh, their, their uh, uh, time outside of work? Uh, do they need f- fancy offices that that uh, allows them to have the the parties and the community or, or is it important or, uh, with the party offices and stuff sure sure <laughs> for some people it is but not all so where, where, where do you know what what's what's the um, average age or the average minds of the person that joins go for uh, is it on the upper spectrum of age or is it in younger ones is there Well, well, we do employ quite a lot of uh, or a variety of expertise. We we don't just employ developers. We have we have uh, we have a, a strong uh, like quality assurance uh, uh, capability. We have uh, these uh, consultancy advisory roles. The, the guys yeah. that that produce powerpoints and so forth, and <laughs> and, and we have a change management consultancy <laughs> and so forth. So it, it's quite uh, the, the spectrum is broad. Uh, and and that's probably something that at all, on the average age also is is visible. It's it's I, I think it's somewhere a little bit under forty at, yeah. at the moment that the average age of a Korean is. Uh, so so a lot of different people, and and that's that highlights the the thing that we just discussed. We we need to understand the needs and and what what different uh, like segments of of these uh, uh, potential employees what they value, and and we need to have the. The answer to that when you go international mm. what happens there like uh because then we have start get get real language stuff actually mm. going on and stuff so uh how many countries do are you actually working in at the moment so we are in uh, established in five countries but but uh outside of finland the, the main market we are really uh targeting is is the german speaking european market so so depends on how you how you look at it but but mm. yeah We do a lot of stuff also uh, outside of Europe for like uh, um, public sector stuff, 
uh, from using the the learnings that we have from the the Finnish public sector and how you digitalize that and and using the like uh, open source technologies that that we have in use in in, in Finland also to to help countries also outside of Finland but the main market here for us is is the, the European market and and the, especially the German speaking uh, market where we where we are established so when when you go to market let's say in, in Germany mm. it's uh it's quite different from Finland it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how do you do it do you go do you do you acquire a local company or what's your strategy when you go to a new market like uh, that's something that we are <laughs> to be honest, learning and 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 yeah, uh, uh, yeah as you say, it's different and uh, it's because it's different. You need to have a local presence. You need to have yeah. a local understanding, and and that's of course not something that you can. Uh, you, yeah, you can acquire a company, but maybe that doesn't even help you in understanding what what kind of market you are really mm-hmm. really working in. So so it's it's been a, for us uh, quite a long process to to uh, establish ourselves in, in in the German market. Get those. Uh, German customers get those uh, uh, local people, German people on board and be, and build that team. We are, yeah, we have done small company acquisition there. Uh, we are looking to 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 like use that as then as to, to scale our operations there. But but uh, uh, understanding the market is done by getting local, and and that's the key. Totally to, agree. Th- th- that's the key to. to going to a new market. Yeah, I remember uh, I was with my one of my startups where it was going to the Spanish market and you know we did, it was a sports sports kind of software and uh we settled in Madrid and and you know we started we started basically uh, back then just taking the Finnish copy and the Finnish branding and stuff and just just translate it basically. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh I remember we went to this digital agency they're supposed to do a campaign for us help us with understanding the local stuff. And and our app was basically marketing itself as a sports bar, um, and then these digital Spanish digital people they were like, "Have you seen a sports bar in Spain?" I was like, "No, I haven't seen a sports bar. What the hell?" And then we're like, "Yeah, there is no sports bar in Spain." It's like what? what, 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 what do you mean? Why? Then I was like, oh, "Is this true?" And they're like, "Yeah, because every bar is a sports bar. It's a TV." It was a it was an expensive kind of learning lesson from Spain when we went there and you know you come from Finland where we have one gigabyte net net at home we have um, like uh, limitless roaming we can go wherever we want we, we nobody gives a shit about Wi Fi yeah. you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah and then you go to Spain and you notice that uh, we had this video software and we were like it, it doesn't like reload and stuff yeah. and we had to start thinking about like serious compression issues because the internet was so bad in 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 Spain and and they were this was in 2015 they didn't have you know unlimited uh they had to go buy two gigabytes of of internet and and this stuff and so we had to re- rethink a lot of our tech uh when going to that market but in my mind I was thinking like Europe it's it's fine but it's not like we yeah. forget that the nordics are like top 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 exactly yeah <laughs> yeah and if you take that to, from from that like consumer perspective into a, into a business perspective we for example work with manufacturers of heavy machinery and uh, for for finnish companies in in that area it's uh, usually clear that okay everything is going to be connected we're going going to have 5g or or whatever solutions there and 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 uh, uh software is going to play such a big part of of, of what the machine is N- not every company even when they are a little bit bigger might be that mature in in their thinking in in the german yeah. market and and uh they might not believe that everything will be connected so, which is kind of an eye opener of course for you when you when you think it's so so obvious that, that is it that's what's is, going is it an edge or or it, a competitive advantage or or is it the deterrent you're like oh do you want to go into this well we like to think of it as an uh, as a competitive advantage and and uh, um, it, but but of course we need to understand the, the differences there and and uh, approach the market on their terms we we can't come just to to and and say that that this is what things are in finland even even though we want to use that to our to our advantage but mm, but we want mm. to like we, we need to translate that message into into something that makes sense for for the local market yeah got to be got to be humble uh, sh- on that yeah exactly do you feel that you you're offering in terms of salary package do people request more like six, seven week holidays or is it going that way or 
uh, as said, different people appreciate Value different things. Yeah. yeah. So so you need to be be ready to to, to like offer them uh, or, or choose uh, what are the the, the the wars that you want to fight. So so that's I think the the main question. Uh, but there is. Uh, At the same time, I, I think uh, salaries is talked of of more and more, mm-hmm. and at the same time, uh, there is a lot of discussion around the the uh, other things and and uh, what what a good employer uh, or employer employee relationship is about, and and of course flexibility, uh, caring of of our people. Yeah, we have a lot of issues in 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 terms of mental health and so forth in our industry with with uh, experts uh, that that uh, tend to. Overwork themselves and so forth. Yeah. So, so really important issues. But, but, but you can't overlook that, like the, the salary part of, of the equation no. at all. But what about uh, what do you think about putting in the salary in the job ad? Do you are you pro or or against? I'm I'm pro, but but uh, at the same time, I, I'd like for many different people in many different phases of their career. To, to be interested in go for and contact us, yeah. so so it, it could go also a little bit wrong uh, if we give the like the wrong impression to people because we have so many different uh, levels of, of mm. uh, seniority, uh, different kinds of ex- experience and 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 expertise that that we can offer people. So so it it would be hard to put that in in uh, in a in a job ad. Yeah, that's it's a very divisive issue, and there's like the strong against, and there's this like, of course you need yeah. to have it, and I'm a little bit in the middle. I'm like, I don't even know why you should put it like, or at least put a per- fairly wide span, because I think uh, salary transparency can lead to a lot of problems also within the organization. <laughs> yeah, that's something that we've been thinking about and working for a number of years now, uh, and and uh, we believe that. Uh, Transparency in terms of salaries is uh, a good thing. Uh, of course, it, yeah, it, it's it's not just a good thing, and not just it's not an easy thing. But but we do publish salaries like internally, mm. anonymously. But uh, for all uh, all salaries are like transparent to everybody, so that you can see that that what other people in in a, a, a similar role to your you uh, have in salary. So so I think that's important. We also mm. yeah encourage people to publish their salaries uh, with their name and and with their like work history and so forth so that we help maybe maybe the junior ones especially help them to to understand that uh, what what can the parts be inside the company ah yeah that, that's very nice actually mm-hmm. then they can see that okay there is this background in the CV and okay this yeah, is what i can expect exactly yeah okay nice so we should we be um worried or optimistic about the future I think we should be very optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? <laughs> well, well, well uh, uh, if you want to discuss uh, uh, salaries uh, if, and for the future, I think it's a good thing that salaries are going up, and and I think it's a good thing that uh, Finnish uh, expertise and, and knowledge is valued higher. Of course, we are mm. more and more in a global market, and and we need to to see to it that uh, Finnish uh, expertise is is competitive. But but. Uh, I, I don't see. I don't want a future where where like Finnish expertise is valued because it's cheap. I want a future where Finnish expertise is valued because it's high level expertise and and uh, deep know how and 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 that's that's Very what it is point. basically. And and, and 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 we should also learn to to price it on the, the uh, international market in in that way. Where is go for in twenty thirty? We usually talk about. Where we are in five years, so that would be 2027. <laughs> so, so <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, <laughs> it's basically the same question, I guess. Um, Go for is a bigger company, much bigger company. Go for is a much more international company in in 2027. Uh, Go for is a much more impactful and and uh, like more uh, taking. Uh, Part in in uh, public discussion about issues that are related to digital technology, not just the, the like the, the technology part. We believe in in technology making uh, lives uh, better for for all of the people, mm. but but that's not something that's uh, automated. In, and and uh, if we don't pay attention to how technology is used, uh, to uh, and and how everybody is is brought aboard adopting technology, 
we, we are not automatically going to have a better society. So that's something that we aspire to be a part of the discussion and, uh, and, and we talk about ethical digitalization and, and as I said earlier, over the, over that's the employee branding. Part. That's it, employee it branding. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So some kind of thought leadership on, on these th- digital issues. Absolutely, yeah. Very nice. Um, I think my time or our time is, is, is running out. Uh, I want to thank you for coming here. Very interesting discussions. And I'm going to uh, think about 2027 and, and go back to your and compare with 2022. You, you, you should. You should. Yeah. yeah so thank you for coming, Mikael Nyland. Um, thank you, Tommy. Mikael Nyland, CEO of Go4. Uh, we could have continued uh, much later. Maybe I'll invite you back to continue. Uh, but thank you so much. This was Allies Podcast and we'll see you with the next guest next time. Thank you. Thank you.